All right, so going on here, our big concept is marketing, advertising, and in the digital world, it's social media. So there's so many social networks that we can cover, uh, but we're going to cover Facebook. Now, as I've said before, I, I teach these other classes in marketing. Uh, next month, if you have your Tuesday and Thursday nights still free, you can come back starting, I guess, December 5th. Was it, was it 5th, Isaac? December 5th? So on December 5th, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 to 9.30, I'm starting to cover my social media courses. It's going to be two weeks long, uh, four class meetings. And what we're covering today of Facebook, I, I will cover again that other time because that's day one of that class. But we're also going to cover deeper aspects like LinkedIn and Twitter and such. Today we only have time for Facebook. <coughs> So Facebook, we're going to cover Facebook because it, you might have heard of it and other people did as well. And it has 2 billion users. Just this year, they got up to 2 billion users. The population of the world is like 7 billion people or 6.5 or something. So lots and lots of people use Facebook. So what we have here is a big marketing medium, a big advertising platform. So most of these networks have those two... Uh, aspects. Most social media has two aspects. Consumer and creator. So regular people using it for friends, family, etc. Creator is businesses to reach an audience. I say the word generically business, but this applies to nonprofit organizations, uh, artists, etc. Just some sort of uh, entity that is trying to reach a consumer. Let's say I've made an app for my nonprofit organization. So that would fall in there too. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm not trying to sell the app, but I want people to know about the app, download the app, use the app for my nonprofit organization. Let's say I'm a musician or an artist and I made an app for my music. Well, I'm trying to sell the music, but I'm going to give away the app for free. So again, I'm the creator trying to reach a consumer. Most networks give you that aspect. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all of that. So we're going to cover Facebook. And what we will do is uh, we'll create a Facebook page. Not the same as a Facebook profile. Those two terms are so generically close together. And I confuse them all the time too, but technically one is a page and one is a profile. So profile is a person and page is a business or the nonprofit or the musician or, or whatever. But by default, when, a, when someone creates a Facebook account, it's a profile. You have to do one extra step to create a page. You can create as many pages as you want. They're all for free to create. They're all for free to use but even better is to create them and use them and to pay to reach more of an audience. So yes, I will say early on, you'll have to get over the, the bad taste in your mouth of paying real money to Facebook to reach an audience. You know, sometimes people feel like, wow, that's, that's such a ripoff. I'm going to pay Facebook to, re to reach people? Well, yeah, just like it's a ripoff in the real world to pay to put your billboard on the sidewalk, and it's a ripoff to pay to put your ad on TV, and it's a ripoff to put it on any other medium in the real world. We have to get used to as a business, yeah, Facebook is going to charge us, the businesses, to reach an audience. But it does work. I have this experience in customers over the years that once they start paying for digital marketing, it works. They reach an audience, they make more sales, and whatever they pay to market comes back in those sales. So raise your hand. How many of you currently have a Facebook account? people okay so if you'd like I'm going to show you here how to create a Facebook page for a business because our idea is I've got an app and again ideally I've got an app and it's fully created thank you 
I've got an app and it's created and I'd like people to know about it and better yet download it and better yet pay 99 cents for it. So you can go to your web browser and we'll go to facebook.com if I don't have a Facebook account I can create one but notice what happens you know it's been so rampant sign up it's free and will always be yes for consumers for regular people but no not for us that we are a company trying to reach an audience but anyway you create an account here and it's going to ask you to create a profile as a person and it says um, if you want to create a business account create a page for a business but even this is tied to a person so I'm making the notes here you need a personal profile to create a business page some person still has to create to be the instigator and create the business page because then multiple managers can run the business page different people with their own login can log into the, the Facebook business page to upload a picture, answer customer service questions, run an ad, promotions, etc. But someone in the organization <coughs> is a person and has to create the page and then they add other managers. And I'll show you that in a bit. So take a moment to uh, log into Facebook or if you don't have a Facebook just follow along for the moment. If you'd like to create an account, great. If not, just follow along. So I'm going to log in. And usually, full disclosure, I hate Facebook. Mm -hmm. I don't like using it for personal, but I love Facebook for business. Uh, so, you know, I have all my friends and family here. Look at that. I've got so many uh, notifications here about stuff happening. I hardly like. I don't even have Facebook on my phone. I'm not trying to be a hipster or anything like that, but I don't like Facebook for personal stuff like this popping up to tell me, why don't you turn on a notification? No, leave me alone. <laughs> That's why I don't log in uh, for, for personal stuff. For business, it's amazing, um, which is what we care about right now, using Facebook for business. So I've logged <coughs> into my personal. I see my friends and family stuff. People want to chat with me whatever so for business on the top right corner is a little black triangle I'm sure it has an official name but that little triangle right there in my case notice what this says my pages I go over here to manage this business or this business or some of the other businesses that I work with so me the person Victor has access to all of these business uh, business accounts but me, the person, does not show up. There is a separation. Like me, Victor, does not appear anywhere in these businesses. I can manage it, but I'm not, you know, affiliated with it. So people have that, you know, people have that confusion all the time about, I'm going to create a business account on Facebook, but then when they fill in that screen, they fill it in as a business, not as a person. And technically, Facebook has all of these rules that we all agree to but we never read which say things like you will not create an account the wrong way. The wrong way here is if I start to create here brand new Victor's App Shop and I'm filling this in as a business here that's wrong. Facebook wants this to be created as a person and all of this stuff about terms and service that no one reads says you're going to create the account the right way because we can shut you down if you do it the wrong way that's one of the things with all of these networks you break their rules they can kick you out it's not about free speech or anything like that because this is a corporation they have chosen to give out this service for people to use to communicate and all of that but it's their property it's their channel that is 
and if you're breaking their rules, they'll shut you up. They'll shut you down. So what we want here as a person, do you see you've got a little button? Create page. So that's what we want to do. If you don't have any pages here, you can easily and for free create as many pages as you want. So let's say my idea is, you know, I'm, I'm Victor, victorapps.com, and I want to start promoting my apps on Facebook. So I want to create a page that focuses on my apps. So let's try this. Create page. Up on that little triangle, click that. Create page. Actually, quick question. How many of you do have access to any pages or use any pages? Oh, a few more people than I thought. Okay. But in any event, this is how you create a page. You log in with your personal account and then click Create Page. So on our notes here, how to create a Facebook business page first use a personal profile log in click the triangle at top right select create a page after you've created the page after we do it in a moment then when we click that triangle again it'll just be there it'll say go manage your page go use your page so select create a page and then it asks what kind of business are you it asks this so again you can target to the right audience this is what marketers in the real world strive for or wish for how can I reach the right audience I put that billboard on the five and lots of people see it but I need people to see it that need my services digitally because people two billion people use Facebook people are uh, writing about what what they're doing what they're reading what they're eating where they're at all that stuff Facebook is collecting it all and building a profile saying this person is really into electronics and sports so if I've got an app about sports I'll be able to target the people interested in sports down to the level of the city down to the gender and language and all of that stuff that we give away for free to these networks so out of all of these possibi general possibilities here which would you say in your opinion might be the best to create company, organization. company might work brand or product might also work you can create as many Facebook pages as you want and you can create a Facebook page for each one of your apps one page focused just on your app or you can create a page for your business as an app company and market all of your apps in that one page there's no wrong answer except that if you do create multiple pages for multiple ideas you have to manage all of that you don't just create the page and then expect your downloads and accolades and everything you have to be active and posting and sharing and replying and being social on social media that's why sometimes uh, companies you know might hire my company and we set it all up for them and then they only hire us for the setup and the initial training and then three months later their page is dead because they forget to update it to do anything they're busy running their business their Facebook is dead so then we tell them yeah no we are hireable for a uh, uh, ongoing service so I think the easy answer for most of us at the moment is a company I go with company there's a bunch of categories here so if I was doing CBDB what do I see? Internet, internet company. 
internet company to might might work. <coughs> I'm going to choose that one for the moment. I am an internet-based company that I'm selling digital goods, my apps. This can be changed. Any of these things that we're going to look at can be changed at any point. There's no wrong answer. So I will choose a company. It's an internet company, and I put my company name there. So Victor Apps LLC. Sure. get started. Oh, there's also other rules here that no one reads, but again, it's basically about you're not going to abuse the system, uh, you're not going to post, you know, hate speech or or, or uh, violent things or whatever. There, there are these community rules that you have to follow. If you break them, you could get shut down. There's very little recourse because, again, it's their, it's their playground and we have to follow their rules if we want to play in their playground get started I've taught this social media stuff for several years and the annoying part is that when I teach it these companies every once in a while change stuff so whatever I show one semester might be slightly different than another they just changed this because the last time I taught this a few months ago this was different some of you might see a screen like this that says add a profile picture and some of you might see that it goes directly to your home page they're, they're always doing like a B testing to figure out the best procedure but whatever comes up here mine is saying put a photo of your business I don't have a photo at the moment so I'm gonna skip it but I can change this at any point question is your social media class the same time as this one? the one that's coming in December yes okay. 6 so to 9 30 What's that? So next Tuesday? Uh, December 5th. Okay. Next Tuesday, I think it's vacation. Oh, what is next Tuesday, actually? That's next Tuesday. Uh, I'm, wishing for, I'm wishing for a vacation that's not there. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so next Tuesday. Come back next Tuesday. You're going to see brand new classmates, um, and it's a brand new class on social media. This classroom. What's that? This classroom. It's right in this classroom, yes. So I'm going to skip this. Hmm? Six to nine thirty. Yeah. So I'm going to skip this because I don't have a picture. I don't have a cover photo either. All right. So I've got. I've got a page on Facebook. It looks very similar to a plain old profile. Remember, profile is personal, page is business. And it's very easy to lose track of which one you're working on. They changed this a few years ago, and I think it's very annoying. There was a way that you would switch, and it would be obvious which one you're working with. Now it's not as obvious. Up here it shows this, this, is, your, this is your page. But if I were to click on home, for example, it would take me back to me, Victor, the person. So I see the stuff of me personally. It used to be much more obvious which of the two you're working on. So it's very easy to not pay attention. And I'm going to start writing here about advertising my app. Oh, and I'm sending it to my friends and family. That's not what I was trying to do. Or vice versa, I might be on the wrong account here. Oh, I might be over on on this business over here and I don't notice even though there's logos everywhere I might not notice and I'm starting to advertise the wrong thing on the wrong business so this is this has happened to me to most people that they lose track of where am I posting what am I posting so just be mindful um, at the top especially here this tells you what you're supposed to be managing so I'm in the wrong business I need to switch over to the correct business, the one I just created. And since I've got multiple ones to work with, it doesn't show up here. Uh, it's right there. But let's say if I didn't see it, I have I can go to see more or manage pages. And they're all listed here. So it says at the top left, I'm on the business page. And I have this handy, easy to remember web address to, to let people know this is my 
my web, my, my little piece of Facebook. Well, actually, it would be better if I had an address something like, you know, Victor Zaps. Facebook.com slash Victor Zaps. That would be much better. But in the default, I have Facebook.com slash Victor dash apps dash LLC dash gibberish. So everyone gets a sort of a gibberish address in the beginning until you change it. And I want to change it to something short and memorable and nice looking. And I can do that right here. Create a page or a username. So one of the things I would say early on for people is um, claim that username. This is advice for all social media. <coughs> social media you wish to market on at least claim your name there might not be any other Victor's apps competitors so I can claim my name but I might have a company Victor's Pizza and other companies have already taken that name so if someone else took the username Victor's Pizza on Facebook, I can't take it. Even if they haven't logged in in two years or five years. One of the big negatives of all of these networks is that they don't give back unused names. That is so annoying uh, because there are people that legitimately, I want that name, I'm going to use that name, but these companies at the moment, they don't release those names back to people. So you're going to have to settle for the original Victor's Pizza or Victor's Pizza number two, or Victor's Pizza San Diego. So at least think about claiming your name on the different networks. At the least, least Facebook. But in the order of importance, you could say Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and then they kind of all tie for different places depending on what you're trying to do after that. Facebook and Twitter, some big ones. Instagram, it's coming up. I'll probably put it up higher very, very soon. Instagram, just on a technical level, already has more users than Twitter. Facebook's at 2 billion. Twitter's at about 320 million. Instagram's at about 500 million. YouTube is at about 1 billion. Pinterest is like maybe 180 million. So millions of people using these networks. You'll be able to find the right audience in any of these networks, but it is often most effective if you don't have a lot of time and budget, Facebook. And in my social media class, we go into detail every day, one network, and we will see that over and over, whatever we learn about Facebook applies to some degree on Twitter, just the interface is different, the terminology, the, the usage is a little different. But then whatever we learn on Twitter also applies to various degrees on Pinterest and all the networks. So the more you use these networks, the more you kind of understand what their purpose is and then what their nuances are. And ultimately, it's all advertising. It's all marketing. It's all necessary because word of mouth is valuable. But if you don't have that first word, how is it going to spread? So social media. Since this is a fake account, I won't claim the name. I don't want to take it from someone else. But you would want to click there and go through the process of claiming your name so that you have something much more uh, visually appealing and memorable than this gibberish. You want you know, a real spelling and name there. You don't uh, add any extension to it. It's just whatever the name is. Exactly. No .html or anything like that. So claim your name. Try to have it the same on all platforms. So for example, Facebook.com slash you know Victor's apps. And there are limitations about no apostrophes and other sorts of symbols. Usually underscores are good. Facebook.com slash Victor's apps. Twitter.com slash Victor's apps. 
But again, it may be that someone already took my name. So I have to be Victor under, Victor's underscore apps. And, and that's annoying. I want it to be consistent. But Facebook is like, um, th like 14 years old, 13, 14, 15 years old by now. Twitter's like 10 years old. A lot of these networks are already over a decade. And if you just had the great idea recently to get on these networks, you, your, your name, your company name, possibly, probably is already taken. So you have to settle for a variation. Here's some more, here's some more advice. Uh, before trying to get followers, complete your profile as much as possible, which means claim the name, set up the about or bio information, add branding, which is graphics, and add content. So I want to appear as legitimately as possible for people to take my page seriously to then download my app or follow me or, or whatever. And so if I've got a real name up on the address bar instead of that gibberish, that helps legitimize me. If I've got an about, if I've got my about information filled out, and on Facebook you can find it um, over <coughs> here under see more about. So if I fill in my about information, what's my company about? What are the kinds of apps I'm creating? If I fill that information in, that also is very useful because that also has to do with. Um, just for the short answer, search engine optimization, SEO, <clears throat> searching. If people are searching for a certain kind of app, and I'm putting the words in the uh, verbiage about that into my bio, that could help me get found. People are searching for things certain kinds of apps, products, etc. So if I create an about screen with these keywords, with these phrases, with this terminology, I could it could help me get found. Branding these graphics are these graphics uh, at the at the top and uh, of most of these accounts right here. This is where I would upload my logo of my business. This is where I would upload a nice, cool, wide graphic to catch people's attention. You can get inspiration on how to kind of create a nice looking account by uh, looking at um, the competition or inspiration. Uh, for example, here, um, what are these guys called? Rovio? Yeah. Uh, Rovio, they're the ones that made Angry Birds, yeah. So, okay, so Rovio, they've got their logo right there. They've, they've claimed Rovio Entertainment. I bet they would have loved to have had Rovio, but someone took it before them. So even big companies like this, if you don't get your name, you didn't get the name. So they're, they're up there, facebook.com slash Rovio Entertainment. There's their graphic. And then over here, they have the, this wide cover graphic about their, their games. And if I go look at their um, about information, again, I can get the inspiration about what do, uh, what do uh, the big players do. Uh, they have their founding date, they have their contact info, a website about information, all of the story milestones. So get inspiration from related companies to see what you can do. If you've never done marketing, if you've never done social media for business purposes, you definitely want to do this, which is competitor analysis, technically. So 
via competitor analysis See what other companies in your niche are doing. And see how you can do your own spin on their tactics. So you're going to see how other tech companies are doing this, or how other internet companies or app companies. And you're going to try your own version. A little competitor analysis, a little reconnaissance. That's another sort of a skill set also. There's college majors in this. Marketing, it's a big old topic. Obviously you're not going to be a pro in the time we're here. And you're not going to be a pro in the you know, 8 or 12 classes that I'm teaching for my other social media class. But uh, I try to show the most direct, tangible things that are the most useful for us as, as as easily as possible content again getting inspiration from here let's see what Rovio is posting um, so on the 24th they posted this at 4 a.m. Um, <coughs> online bullying then over here 41 what is this? Quarterly results, 41% increase. We'll learn more about how Eddie the Bird came to be Angry Birds Evolutions. Halloween tribute to Iron Maiden. Okay, so they're posting a bunch of, of stuff. This is again the idea of consumer versus creator. You would say, well, how is this important? Like, how am I get, how is this going to help me make sales? Some are obvious enough that it's an ad. Go to the App Store and get this. And the result here is that there are these comments and um, reactions. So, content, add content uh, to get reactions or conversions. Add content, which is for impressions, to get reactions, which are conversions. I had a, a higher up there, I want downloads. Well, just because every day I'm going to post something that says, download our app, that's not going to work. That's just advertising all day long. People are going to tune that out. So getting ideas from, from other related accounts, you see that they're putting just fun things sometimes, inspirational things, funny things, weird things, whatever. They're, they're not all one, all the time sales, sales, sales. They're trying to build a community. They're trying to build followers. Because these followers, ultimately, the more followers you have, uh, the more possibility of getting those downloads. So, a company is always trying to get more followers. To build their target audience. Like in the real world, I can put my ad on one TV channel and another TV channel and another and another. It costs more, but I'm putting my TV ad on more TV channels to reach more of an audience. The more people see about my product, my business, whatever, the more results I'll get. So the more active I am, the more followers I get. My followers are a target audience. They are a captive audience. The more possibility that I get a result, a conversion, a download, a sale. And again, easier said than done. You may have an amazing app, but it's still difficult to convince people to pay that hard-earned 99 cents. Well, the more you do it, the more active you are, the more you promote and hype, the more possibility to get the result. 
So what I'm saying here, add content to get reactions such as followers. Or downloads and etc. After using the account, so Facebook, Twitter, any of them, after using the account for free for a while, it's recommended to then move on to paid marketing. You can use Facebook all day long for free as a business. You can use Twitter all day long as a business. But it then gives you better results when you start to pay Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or Pinterest to reach more people, to reach the right people. And I said you can start with as little as how much? One dollar. So we'll see how that looks. Because um, unfortunately, again, as I said, we're playing in their playground. We're following their rules. So what Facebook did a few years ago was that even if you have 1,000 followers, that doesn't mean all 1,000 will see your posts, your, your, uh, your content. Facebook uh, did this and publicly said it also from the consumer side of things. Facebook said, uh, we realize that regular people, consumers, don't want to see so many ads. They want to connect with friends and family. So we are going to diminish the reach of businesses. Well, that's great for consumers. Because I, I log on to these networks to talk to my friends and family. And that's terrible for us businesses. It used to be I had a thousand followers, so those thousand people would see my posts. And Facebook is saying, well, we're not, you're not going to reach those thousand anymore. There is some trade secret proprietary algorithm that out of your 1,000, it may be 900, it may be 20, it may be 500. I don't know that. No one knows that except for those that work in Facebook. But some amount of my 1,000 followers are going to see my ad that says our latest app is out. So Facebook is actively making it that you can't reach the followers that you used to be able to reach easily. Yes? I actually went to a, uh, a seminar about that and they said a thing about 25% of your followers see what you can post. I don't doubt that it's that or lower. Um, unless the person worked at Facebook, though I wouldn't believe that exact value, but I do believe it is low because really this is some sort of trade secret from the companies, uh, especially Facebook, that we don't know. Maybe it, for whatever good luck you have, maybe you reach 90%. But yeah, assume it's low. So the point here is that, let's say 25%. So uh, what is that, 250? Let's say 250 of my 1,000 followers did see my post. This goes back again to... Um, the only way then to reach more people is Facebook ads, right? Paying Twitter ads, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, whatever network you're on, Google ads. So if, if Facebook at least is setting it up that you're not going to be able to reach your audience, let's say if it's 25%, what's 25% of 10 followers? less than one um, so very low amount right ten um, if you've got ten people very low amount of people are going to, to to see anything so that is annoying and tragic but there's an answer Facebook ads and yes it's a very cynical answer oh I have to pay to reach to see these people Yes, just like you have to pay to put that billboard on the street, to put that ad on TV, to put that ad on the radio, to pay the person on the sidewalk flipping that sign. All of that real-world marketing is not free. Even if you're putting flyers on people's um, windshields and you borrowed the company printer, 
well, you're paying for that, especially if you get caught. So digital marketing, you have to get that, you have to get past that, that initial annoyance or shock or indignity or whatever. I have to pay these companies to reach an audience? Well, yeah, we're in their playground, and if they change the rules, you play with the rules or you don't play. And Facebook's got the biggest audience. So luckily, you can pay very little. And, and even with paying very little, it really helps. So the way you would do that, one of the most direct ways to do this is uh, what is called boosting posts. So the easiest way to get started with Facebook advertising boosting posts create a post so you're sharing a picture you're sharing a link to your product you made a video you created something some post and that's something I can't quite teach especially in the time that we have here it depends on your product but you're gonna create a post publish a post create and publish the post then pay to boost it to reach more people. To reach more of your followers, yes, but beyond your followers also. So it sort of is, you know, what a real world marketer would, would kill for. I need my business to reach the right people and I have these imperfect channels in the real world. What radio station do I put it on at what time of the day? Well, I want to put it on during rush hour when everyone's coming home. Well, you had that great idea, and 50 other companies had that great idea. And the radio station can only sell that amount of time to a certain amount of, to a certain person. So the one that really pays the most for those 10 seconds of ad time on the radio at rush hour is the one that's going to get the, the listeners. But even if they paid the most to have that ad during rush hour, that still doesn't mean, you know, I'm driving, I can't call at that moment. So that's why digital marketing can be so much more effective and powerful. Pay to boost it to reach more people, to reach the right people. So here's how I would do it. I've got this account. And if I have the if I had the time to fully craft a real kind of post, I would show that. But you see here, I have the I have the uh, ability to uh, create text posts, photo and video posts, live video events, sell products. Just to keep it super basic, I'm gonna say here in my uh, Victor's Apps account uh, sale this week on our newest uh, on our newest app. Download it here, and I have the link. Whatever, I have some sort of link. This obviously is very, very, very advertisey. It's very obvious it's an ad. This is again the art and the science and the magic of advertising. What, what, what is an effective ad? Does it reach the right person? Does it resonate? Is it funny, interesting, useful? The whole complicated answer to give there. But let's say this is what I'm trying to promote to people. Uh, there's the button there, boost. Uh, there's publish which is going to get sent out to my followers. And again, assuming 25%, only 25% of my followers will see it, boosting is going to be better. But I recommend to first publish it and then boost it. Uh, because if you start the process of boosting, and let's say your computer crashes, well, this that you were creating here is lost in addition to what you're trying to set up here. If you first publish your content with a regular old publish, it's set, it's published out to the world, then you can come back and boost it, and then if your computer crashes, well, your original posting has been published and it exists. <coughs> so I would
let's say create your post, publish it to the public, then return to boost it. Yes. Results. Yeah, definitely. On I your, on your campaigns. Yes, definitely. I can show examples of clients in, in a little bit that there's like a steady stream of, of the free method. And then when you do the boosting method, there's a suddenly a big jump of views, mm -hmm. definitely. And then even out of that big jump of views, there's also a jump in conversions, which are the, the, the actual sales and all of that. So for some of our clients, like restaurants and such, uh, you know, the, the, the client sees that result, that once they pay for some of this digital advertising, suddenly they're selling more of a certain food. Because we create a photo, we create a post advertising this food, mm -hmm. we boost it, more people see it, they get sales in the restaurant. So it does work. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but let's say in that example of that restaurant, yeah, quantifying their return on investment is that they've sold more of a dish. That's the best way to quantify it. We spent $100 this month to advertise this meal, and we see in the cash register at the end of the month, we sold 20% more, because it comes from that extra marketing. How do you know, do you establish a baseline at the beginning of the month? To prove that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, because you don't know if you were successful if you don't have something to test it against. So the baseline oftentimes with these clients is they've never done this. So they have the data preceding them hiring us, which we can look at to see before you hired us, you had this amount of result. During this period of time? Mm-hmm. The same time last year or something? Or last month or last week or last year, sure. And then after these campaigns are created, Facebook will tell you then, here's how things changed compared to last month or two weeks ago or, or whatever. So these networks, it's not just that you're giving them money and something will happen. They will give you the data that shows you you got more views, uh, more clicks. It's still a lot up to us, however, to make the final sale. Does the photo look pretty? Does the text, is the text clear? Because they'll gladly take your money on an ugly ad but you have to craft a good-looking ad, good-looking text, a good-looking link, and then they will promote it out to reach people, but it's still up to us to create the content. You know, in the real world, I could spend thousands of dollars to put my, uh, my little musical jingle on, on TV, but if I sing it myself and I don't know how to sing, it's not, it's not helping me, even if I spent that much money on it. What's that? Might be considered content. <laughs> uh, it might be ironic content, sure. That is a form of marketing and virality nowadays. Okay, so let's say I do publish this. Now this is a fake account, so I don't care if it goes out there for real, but um, that went out there, so all my zero followers will see it. Let's say I had 10 followers, 25% of 10 is 0 0.25, which is one person, let's say. So one person sees it. One person is not enough to sustain my business. So I've made a post, and I have Boost. In Boost, then, it unlocks this really powerful and, and useful system in Facebook where I can choose my demographics. I can create who am I targeting this to. I've already got a bunch of them already created, but let me create a new one here, a new audience. And look at this. I can target age ranges, locations, uh, particular interests. So um, let's say I'm creating a demographic or a segment. This is also known as segmentation. Creating a segment or a target audience, parents with kids. I'm looking at all genders, and I'm looking for parents that have, you know, that are at least just anything here, 30 and up. Let's say uh, I want to target my app. I can do it via, via countries or states and cities and stuff. Let's say I'm doing um, San Diego. 
You can do San Diego, California, San Diego, Texas, San Diego, Venezuela, San Diego, <coughs> Colombia. I can do all of them if I want, but let's say San Diego, California, the best one, of course. So I'm going to do that one. And so I'm targeting 25-mile radius, not just San Diego. I'm going to reach also Tijuana, and I'm going to get up over here to, I don't know, La Mesa, whatever, over there. A bit of Hamul, I guess. Okay, so 25, even in the people over here in the ocean. Targeting over here. So uh, I can put that up to 50 radius, so it goes up to Oceanside and further south, and then all the way down to 10 so just that. And yeah, I can add more than one. Okay, if I put it down to 10, I also want to reach people in uh, uh, Los Angeles. Um, not Los Angeles, Texas. Los Angeles, California. So I've got two big locations here. Everyone on Facebook can see my post. But this is better because I'm targeting to specific locations that might be interested in my product. And imagine I'm doing this for a business on Main Street. So obviously I would be targeting real locations. So it's further refined over here. Interests. Facebook is telling me right here, if you're too specific that you won't reach enough people, if it's too broad that you reach too many people, meaning not the right people, or somewhere in the middle. Potential audience of 5 million people say, seeing it. Great, I'm going to make 5 million sales, right? No, think about it like very conservatively but realistically, 1%. So 1% of 5 million is great. But that still might be a little too broad. So I can further do categories right here. I don't know what to type, so a good idea is to first browse. So I've got demographics, interests, behaviors, categories, all this scary stuff that Facebook knows about you, the more you use it. But again, for consumers, this is why I said I hate Facebook for personal, but I love Facebook for business, because look at all this information I can tap into. So let's say uh, what's under interests, entertainment, Games, movies, music, reading, just to kind of choose something here as an example, games, let's say uh, action games, just to show you this. Then look at how it, it targeted even further. Well, I went from 5 million to only 320,000. Is that good or bad? Either or, but not really, because... 5 million, yes, is a bigger number, but it doesn't mean it's a better number. Uh, effective advertising is, is about segmentation, about targeting the right audience. 5 million people see my product, but that doesn't mean all 5 million will care. Now that I've targeted that people in LA and San Diego at a certain age that are interested in action games, that's much more targeted, and then that's a good amount. Do you get charged on your reach? No. No. So I can vary this reach as much as I want because then I can also add other things like, um, let's see, now that I've added one thing under suggestion, it's also mentioning people that simply identify as gamers or online games or role-playing games. Um, let me just say here, online games. So then that one changed up to 590. So this little meter here is very useful. Anywhere that you're in the green is a good number. It doesn't have to be in the millions. Uh, so let's say this is what my audience will be. And I can create different audiences and switch between them, but I can only choose one at a time, but I can set it up as I wish. Return to boost it, create a demographic, or a segment of people most likely to care about your post, your content. My post is an ad for my game. So I'm going to create I'm going to create a segment, I'm going to boost, I'm going to try to reach the right audience. 
that cares about my game, my app, my company, my nonprofit organization, my restaurant on Main Street. Then we have after this budget and duration. Here it started off with twenty dollars. Estimated reach one thousand four hundred to three thousand. Hey, wait a minute! I thought I saw like five hundred whatever thousand people. Well, yeah, you can reach that five hundred thousand whatever people with more budget. So at twenty dollars. You know, a thousand to three thousand is still a good amount. Obviously, I want even more people, but here Facebook is trying to say that even with this amount of budget, this is the number of people that at the least will see your ad. And like I said, Facebook will take your money even out of an ugly ad, uh, even out of a nonsensical ad, even it'll take your money, just like you know, uh, the local station will take your terrible ad it's up to the quality of your ad and your verbiage and the visuals and the sound and all of that and uh, again that's hard to teach the, the how to use Facebook and this marketing stuff is not that hard to teach the thing that's hard to do is create something effective that's why these companies have these huge marketing departments that's what they're doing all day long figuring out phrases and slogans and virality and all of that that's why people get paid a lot of money to figure out what pushes people's buttons and makes them buy stuff and so clicking here we have all of this other range you know it'll take two hundred dollars or ten thousand people that doesn't mean ten thousand sales but that means I'm gonna reach ten thousand people right now I have zero followers so I'm gonna reach ten thousand people not ten thousand sales but the more that I reach the more possibility of making the sales five dollars three hundred and sixty Yes, I did say a dollar. I don't see it here. Choose your own. One dollar. Seventy-three to one hundred and ninety. And yeah, that's a lot smaller than we just saw a moment ago. But I'd love to have seventy-three downloads. I'd love to have fifty downloads, ten downloads. I've got a dollar in my couch. Okay, great. I'll pay a dollar here. Question. Yeah. You could, but I wouldn't recommend it because uh, why would you advertise and pay for other people? Depending on commission rates. If yeah. the product that you spend $20 and, and the product is $100, you get $20 back in one sale. Good point. I wasn't thinking about commissions and such, but yes, you can definitely do that based on how you've got your contract with your affiliates. Yeah, you can do this to promote them and uh, whatever you're paying here and you earn it back. Yeah, that'll work. And then, I, and like I said here, they're, they're happy to take more money. Uh, you have to change another setting to go that high, not 10,000, 1,000. There you go. So, yeah, you can reach more people. But anyway, let's say I just put it for $1. Uh, I only have a dollar to work with. So you're still going to reach some amount of people. Uh, for one day, Facebook will uh, promote and show your post as an ad to the right people who you've targeted. Well, I want uh, to do it for, for 14 days. This this will tell you, okay, well, you need to have at least a dollar per day, so that's $14. So for two weeks, Facebook is going to use its secret proprietary algorithm to show your post as an ad to the right people at the right time in the right locations and all of that. Does and it go to the same people for, for 14 straight days? No, and that's what I'm saying about the proprietary algorithm. Uh, I don't doubt that the same person will see it a few times, but I don't doubt that other people see it. So they do a good job of kind of spreading the net out to the right people. After 10 years of collecting data on us, it's pretty smart about who to send it off to. And so the, the more you spend, the longer you can run this, the more it'll target it. Let's say for one day I want to do a big old $14 um, budget. So on one day it's going to send it to as many of, peop as many of the right people to hopefully get the best result. 
then of course you need to put in your credit card because this is going to be real money that you pay to reach <coughs> real people through the network. And does that mean that some of those people that would send it to, if, if they don't log on to Facebook, they never see it anyway? Or do they have a way of telling you after the results, saying, yes, someone was online, someone actually saw your ad? There is in the screen of insights full breakdown of your results and it focuses more on the logged in people because nowadays with such a huge audience two billion people you almost don't have to care about those that are not logged in so many are logged in that the data that you will get is of people logged in and anyway Facebook is set up that you can't really do too much with it unless you're logged in so if you try to kinda use Facebook without being logged in it'll keep nagging you log in and you can't do much do they guarantee said between X and Y, do they guarantee that the results, that, that, that low, at least the lower number, will see, see your ad? They can guarantee the low number of impressions, yes, but they can't guarantee that those will be conversions, yeah. So, um, the more you pay, the more you refine your audience, the more you can uh, reach the right audience and get some result. You may see here mine says tracking conversions, Facebook pixel. Facebook can tell you everything that happens in Facebook. But if I've got this link going over to some other site, Facebook can't fully tell you what happened after they left Facebook, after the person clicked and left Facebook. So if you set up the Facebook pixel, this is a little bit of code that you add to your website. Let's say I was guiding them back to my website, victorsapps.com. If I go through the process of setting up a pixel, I'm adding Facebook's code on my website, and then Facebook can continue to track the person out of Facebook into your site to give you more of the data of what the person did on your site. Because let's say I guided people back to my site, but then on my site they said, never mind, and they closed the window. And I never made that sale. But Facebook still gets their money because they, they promoted you on Facebook. So setting up the, the pixel is a little technical, but I think all of us could do it here because after all, we just were here for three months doing programming. This is going to be copying a little HTML into your website. You can do that. And then you get even more data about what happens after people leave your Facebook ad. Victor, is there a documentation that explains what you expect to get out of Facebook ad, how it works? Yeah, it's all up here. I can't quite close the screen yet, That's but right. it's in that little triangle. And there is that their whole ads system. And it's a whole huge manual about everything about what this is. So here, create a demographic, set a budget, set a timetable, optional, add a Facebook pixel to track uh, users outside of Facebook, add credit card, run the ad, sit back, get rich. 99 cents at a time. In a nutshell, this is Facebook ads, this is Twitter, this is YouTube, this is Google AdWords, all of this. This is what the new generation of marketing is. It's a new spin on the classic thing, that billboard on the freeway. Well, here's a billboard in Facebook. What's better about this is since it's digital and these networks so, so not, know so much about us because we willingly give it to them, we can target the right people. Uh, we saw there by location and gender and interests and all of that. And if we've got the budget for it, we can reach the right people. It's still up to you to create the right content and have a great app or product or nonprofit organization or whatever. 
after running your first campaigns, check insights, which is your, your data, your uh, results. Check insights to see what worked or didn't. Then create more ads based on past results. So that means this week I might run an ad for two days of two dollars with a certain graphic, certain text, etc. Next week I change it up, different text, different graphic, two more dollars, two more days. So I spend one month a different kind of post, a different kind of boosted post once a week. So four different ads in one month. That's eight dollars. And based on that, I start to get these insights about, OK, I should target in a little closer the age range. I should change the location like this. I should use um, these uh, interests. And as you do this more and you figure out your perfect demographic, then it starts to snowball. You know the best demographic to reach, and then you spend those $8 completely on one kind of ad instead of two dollars on one, two on another, two on another. And it is an ongoing, long sort of process, but that's why there is a whole industry of digital marketers that are out there that do this and know how to do it effectively and get you results. But like any other real world marketing, it's not free. But in the classes that I teach, we go into more detail. Again, you won't become a pro, but I get a lot of people coming in telling me they got great results very quickly from learning some of these basic things. A person can always learn this on their own, but if they've got a guide that has experience and results, it does help start off on the right foot. So we'll go kind of this far. Obviously, I'm not going to press that button because then it will charge me a dollar and uh, here I'm advertising something and people will see it on desktop and mobile and this is even th we didn't even have a chance to get to it but uh, you can use the same budget to also market over on Instagram if you didn't know Facebook bought Instagram a few years ago so for the pro two for the price of one you're paying Facebook to market and, and promote on Facebook and it will also send it over to Instagram I don't have it connected here to for you to see that but you would get it that you would get that as well another hot up-and-coming network Instagram so this is basically our talk of digital marketing it works don't be afraid of it don't be afraid to spend a few dollars. Maybe don't buy so many lattes that month and uh, spend it on your advertising. Questions? I will put these notes in the network folder and I'll upload the videos also. We're going to end the main lecture, have a little lab time uh, for you to do the final uploads and eat some more of this stuff. And then uh, call me over when you've uploaded to your Amazon, I'll check you off right there and then we'll we'll wrap up. Question. Okay, one moment. General questions? No? Okay. I'll check you one moment.